I'm happy to announce that we have the amazing Daniel Ellsberg with us, who's joined us once before uh, on the Unity 4J Vigils, but who we're very lucky to be with again. Dan, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, can you explain uh, you maybe some of your thoughts on the latest developments with WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and their, uh, WikiLeaks's tweets stating that there's the, uh, you know, that the two different sources within the Ecuadorian government stated to them that the Moreno's government would expel Assange from the embassy within quote hours to days. Um, what do you make of that? I find it very plausible that this very vigil is causing them to step back and to reconsider and at the very least postpone their efforts. And if we keep it up, uh, that may well last for a while, conceivably until Moreno is, uh, is it possible that he will be impeached? He's in serious trouble, obviously, with this INA scandal of the offshore uh, financing. Is that right? I take it he can't be indicted like Trump in a way while he's in office, but that he can be impeached. Is that correct? I believe that he can be uh, be basically forced to resign, is my understanding. And there we had a guest earlier on this evening, uh, Jose Rivera from Ecuador, and he was talking to to Joe about the poss the strong possibility that Moreno could essentially be ousted. Um, I think then there would be the possibility of being, uh, you know, prosecuted for corruption. Uh, but as far as whether that will happen or not, I don't know. But uh, as far as Jose Rivera uh, was concerned, he said that actually that could be a negative. Um, outcome for Assange because he he stated that the likelihood would be that a, a more conservative uh, individual would be put in uh, would replace Moreno and that would actually be a worse outcome for Assange. So it's it's a very unstable situation. After that, with the yeah. storm coming down here, uh, look, um, Julian Assange took on the powers of the world here when he started this operation altogether. And uh, as I've said long ago, he, I, I was one of the first people I think he asked to be on the board. This person I didn't know, Julian Assange, uh, emailed me. I, I was a logical person to ask on a whistleblowing site, except that it seemed to me uh, unimaginable that he could pull that off uh, independently and that they would not uh, surveil him and either use anybody trying to whistleblow through him as, uh, as he a trail that they could follow, uh, or that he, or that he himself, for all I knew, was uh, was part of that uh, process. I, 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 it was hard to, to believe that this was a possible thing. Well, he showed that it was possible. Uh, Chelsea Manning's uh, um, collateral murder uh, video, which was well named showed that uh, they had not been able to stop him before he got that out, and the other material that he got out. Uh, and I uh, participated in a press conference on that in London on the Afghan war logs. Uh, I think it was sort of the, no, sorry, it was the Iraq, the Iraq war logs after the Afghan war logs. Anyway, uh, he showed that he really is a danger and a, th and a thorn in the side to powers that are trying to deceive their own people, commit aggression, conceal corruption uh, of various kinds. and. You have to expect that uh, there will be a, a very heavy efforts against him, as has occurred. So we're trying now to uh, preserve uh, freedom of speech in our own country to the extent possible. There's no question at all that if Julian, in my mind, that if Julian Assange is successfully expelled from the Ecuadorian embassy in clear violation, it would seem, of uh, international norms here on asylum, if he is extradited to the US, which I well believe the British would be happy to do uh, in cooperation with the US. And I think he would then be in a cell uh, in solitary for the rest of his life and kept from any, uh, uh, any communication with the outside world essentially. As uh, Chelsea Manning was uh, incommunicado for 10 and a half months, as my friend Mordecai Venunu in Israel, spent 17 years, I believe, in prison, 11, 10 and a half in solitary confinement. The uh, uh, example, the precedent of Julian actually being prosecuted in the first instance, even being indicted, is already a precedent, uh, of extremely ominous precedent 
for journalists and publishers in this country. And they should be recognizing that and, uh, uh, and forming a consensus in support, I think, of that. And really, I think some unusual uh, people have spoken out and said that this would be a terrible precedent. The, and, and would be used, I think, very quickly by uh, Trump and his successor, whoever that might be, Democrat or Republican, to go after journalists in a way that each administration up till now has backed off from doing. It's not generally known that Richard Nixon had an, uh, intended to indict Hedrick Smith and Neil Sheehan of the New York Times, uh, rather than their publisher, it appears, uh, in the Boston grand jury during my trial, and that that was precluded only by the fact that my trial was ended on the basis in part of warrantless wiretapping, which had clearly been exerted against many people in the Boston grand jury case, including my friends Noam Chomsky and Dick Falk, who when they raised the question of, wire, of warrantless surveillance, their subpoenas to the grand jury were dropped. And I think the, the grand jury in general was dropped on that. So there is a precedent for uh, a president thinking hard or attempting actually proceeding to try to indict journalists for doing journalism uh, for, uh, and essentially rescinding the First Amendment. Now uh, we've heard that uh, President Obama also considered that, his Department of Justice, and backed off from indicting Julian Assange on First Amendment grounds, which was absolutely appropriate. It's, uh, it's a terrible precedent that they even consider doing that. But as I say, it was not for the first time. And there's no question that uh, Julian did provoke them into considering that just as I did back with the Pentagon Papers. And, um, and other journalists have done since then. And James Risen, of course, uh, they've tried to get on contempt of court if he, for his resistance to being subpoenaed in the Jeffrey Sterling case. So there is a great deal at stake here. Uh, if it matters whether we have freedom of the press in the First Amendment, and it does, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the reason for most much of the secrecy is to carry on an imperial policy without presenting it to the public uh, at all for any kind of authorization or to Congress, and uh, to keep that secret and to keep the means we're using, including torture, assassination, military coups, uh, bribery, various other things that empires do when they're maintaining what, in particular, what we have, a covert empire, an empire that we deny with some plausibility, uh, uh, given their uh, extensiveness of their false evidence and their denials and their lies, a covert empire that we deny is an empire. And we deny the means by which we maintain it as most empires really do. So uh, uh, the effect of that has been uh, wars like Vietnam, like Iraq, like uh, Afghanistan, continuing to this day. And uh, the material that uh, Grueling Assange published from Chelsea Manning, actually, uh, on Iraq and Afghanistan, did not succeed in ending those wars. But uh, on the other hand, the chance of ending them without inside information like that is even lower, is much lower. So, and the, uh, the cost of not having, I think, uh, more whistleblowing and more uh, freedom of the press than we've seen is the cost of more wars like that, including the possibility of wars with Russia that began uh, with almost any armed conflict, whether it's over the Baltics or Ukraine or anywhere else, uh, that escalates to a nuclear war that threatens life on Earth, that human life, nearly all human life uh, through nuclear winter. So the stakes here remain extremely high. And uh, however, uh, whatever one's feelings about particular judgments or moves that Julian Assange may have made or any other human has made, the fact is that a defense of his uh, asylum, uh, and I really uh, think he should be, he, he deserves uh, to enjoy that asylum other than in a seven years in one room, which I must say would certainly affect my judgment, not for the better. And I can easily believe that uh, he's had problems with it. Uh, and I would like to see him out of that room, but not in isolation in an American prison. So uh, I'm certainly uh, un unequivocally 
um, against the efforts of uh, Britain, let's say, to reach a deal with Ecuador to get him out of there. I'm against the efforts of the Trump administration and earlier the Obama administration to, uh, to indict him, to get him, get him out of there. And, uh, and very much appreciative of the efforts of so many people who've been on these vigils and have been speaking up for him. I think uh, the fact that he hasn't been expelled yet by Moreno is uh, a tribute to the effect of this publicity, this degree of transparency for his support. I'm unhappy to hear what you just said, told me that uh, Ecuador can uh, produce a leader worse than Moreno yet. Uh, bad to hear. I was just reading the other day, by the way, uh, I mean, literally two days ago, on the IMF agreement that is pending apparently with, um, with Moreno, um, the terms of which probably have, have reflect uh, Moreno's willingness to collaborate with the U.S. in various ways. The IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is essentially a um, facilitator of military coups in general because the terms that they demand, like those that Moreno seems willing to accept, of uh, cutting public services, uh, in, uh, cutting minimum wages, uh, improving uh, exports uh, and export of capital and profits uh, to the disadvantage of any social welfare programs, these things can't really be put into to play uh, with a democratic government. Uh, so the alternative is a military government or an extreme right-wing government that takes over and is willing to accept those terms generally. The fact that Moreno is involved in that negotiation right now tells me that he there's a lot at stake for him economically uh, and his country uh, the friendliness that he has with the US. The UK acts likewise, pretty much. So the idea that there is a deal here, I read, for example, the other day, yesterday, that uh, the deal might take the form, I think WikiLeaks announced it, but I find it very plausible, that uh, Ecuador will pretend that their only concern for giving him asylum was the possible death penalty, which is basically absurd. Uh, of course, you give people asylum even when they are not facing the prospect of a death penalty when they deserve it as he did. And I don't remember any particular discussion of that in the earlier years, in particular with the Korea administration, but even with Moreno earlier. All we have to be assured is that he won't be, um, uh, won't be given a death penalty. And then we set him uh, into the, uh, we send him into the arms of the US Department of Justice. And uh, if Britain then gets some kind of assurance that they will, prosecutors will not seek a death penalty, uh, there can be a joint plea. Has this been discussed earlier, actually? Am I just telling you? No, no, continue. Please continue. Yeah, we've discussed some some parts of this, but not in the way that you're, you're explaining it. So please go on. Britain will, will pretend that they're assured there is not a death penalty, and uh, Ecuador will pretend that that's all they care about. They give him into the arms of the British, who then turn him over, uh, not for a death penalty, just for life imprisonment. Let's keep in mind a little precedent here. Uh, uh, Chelsea Manning was facing charges that possibly included a death penalty uh, for aiding and abetting an enemy simply by telling the truth here, by the way, uh, that was unfavorable to the US. Okay, the prosecutors, I think, if I remember correctly, said at one point, we are not seeking the death penalty. Uh, it was made clear at the time they might not seek it, but that did not protect her under the terms of this from the judge giving the death penalty. The judge is not bound by the prosecutor's uh, request, as a matter of fact. So uh, the fact is that if they, if they made charges that included the death penalty against Trillian, uh, that's no assurance at all. I would say that in the end, he could get the death penalty, but that's not the major uh, the issue here. The major issue is life imprisonment for telling the truth, for committing journalism. And uh, uh, for that, uh, he certainly deserves asylum, and it would be a, an absolute mockery if Ecuador and UK pretended otherwise. But that's the kind of mockery that does happen uh, all the time. So uh, people uh, say things and accept assurances with their fingers crossed behind their back. These are talking about nations 
like individuals. And uh, these are nations in the case of the US that has committed aggression in Iraq, uh, greatly expanded uh, if, uh, great war crimes in Afghanistan as revealed by Julian Assange. And certainly they have reason uh, humanly to try to avenge themselves and, uh, and to set an example to keep other people from doing that. So uh, I'll just finish by saying like once again, I applaud your efforts to keep at this uh, and uh, hope it continues and hope we keep this uh, Julian out of a prison, bad as it is for him to be in that room. Absolutely. And I, I, I wanted to ask you, I don't know how much time you have left to spend with us, but um, I wanted to ask you why, in your opinion, I know that, you know, we've often discussed the establishment press as state stenographers. And I think that phrase comes from John Pilger, but I think it's perfect to describe them. But even so, even with that in mind, um, Sorry, I didn't hear the state, state stenographers, you know, oh, yeah. uh, basically mouthpieces of, of power. So it, even with that in mind, Right. Why can you explain or, or comment on the way in which the media has not only failed to advocate for Assange because it would be advocating in their own self-interest, but has actually engaged in this rabid propaganda war against Assange and WikiLeaks? I don't know if you have a comment on that. It's clear that uh, the very first descriptions of him by the New York Times to whom he was giving this information uh, about his scruffiness generally, you know, and his, uh, his uh, personality as a hacker, let's say, was very unfavorable from the beginning. Um, but remember, these are people who depend for most of their access on uh, good relations with people in power. Actually, the secrecy system serves the media, the mainstream media to a considerable extent because it allows the possibility of scoops, of backgrounders, of inside information given to one reporter at a time who gives them a scoop and there, thereby favor, uh, which is not uh, accessible to the others because it's secret. They're telling her or him a secret and the others don't have access to it. So they get their front page uh, story and then uh, next week it goes to somebody else, next week to somebody else, but rather than succumb to jealousy about this, they wait their turn for the next access uh, and the next scoop, which they will not get if they tell more than they're expected to get, if they, if they are critical, if they raise the question of the motives for the leak. What I'm saying is that most leaks are authorized and given uh, to the advantage basically of the administration uh, uh, on a quid pro quo basis. And um, uh, what they get back from the reporter is favorable coverage and a failure to question and criticize otherwise. Now, Julian Assange, not alone in this, like some other reporters, uh, didn't play that game. And um, uh, that was, it. actually he was showing up the other reporters to a considerable extent for not having gotten this same information earlier. After all, uh, both uh, uh, Chris, uh, Chelsea Manning did actually make overtures to the Times and the Washington Post before she went to WikiLeaks. And as often happens, uh, got nowhere, uh, found no interest in that. So uh, they're not happy at this competition, but in particular, I, I, I do think uh, that they behave very badly with respect to both uh, Chelsea Manning and to uh, Julian Assange, no question. I could only say that when it came to the press, including specifically the New York Times, I had to tell Julian, uh, I was treated pretty much the same way. I won't rehearse all that, but it was familiar to me. I almost think that uh, reporters treat their sources, or think of their sources, the way the police uh, for, of classified information, the way police think of their informants snitches, basically criminals who are breaking the law by giving this information. You want to have the information from them, but I don't feel sources uh, experientially experience much ex respect or concern from the reporters they're involved in. They don't want to give their name because they want that informant to, to deal with them, not with somebody else. And they're, they're pretty good on that, on the whole. 
But in terms of uh, uh, caring for their interests, if, if they are prosecuted, um, I don't think any source has seen any of that. I didn't, and I don't know anybody else who did. Uh, any encouragement to people to contribute to their defense? Um, any, any publicity to the defense fund? Uh, any sharing of legal uh, advice of any kind from their own lawyers, for example? Zero. Uh, these people are cast off, in effect. Uh, they're treated the way CIA is said to tell its, its uh, foreign agents, in effect. You're on your own, you know, if you... Uh, if you get, uh, if somebody comes down on you, this didn't, you know, we're not responsible for you. Anyway, that is the relation. And um, uh, it's, the fact is that the mainstream press behaved, performed terribly in allowing us to be lied into the Vietnam War. They behaved exactly the same way. I'm talking about the Post and the, uh, and the Times and many others. There was a few exceptions here, again, as in the, I think the Mopachi papers were actually better on this in the case of Iraq. But they got us lied into Iraq. Uh, the possibility of the administration manipulating the press and thus the public and Congress also into uh, wars in, you mentioned Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia, which we hardly hear about, Sudan. Will they keep us out of a war with Iran if, if that catastrophe is planned long in advance. John Bolton is making hardly any uh, uh, any secret at all of the fact that for many years he's wanted war with Iran. Um, I don't see the press uh, building any fire break on that by uh, probing the motives for this or with the costs, the consequences. Uh, how many people have been exposed in the press to the uh, estimates of what war with Iran would actually cost the world, starting with Iran and the Middle East and so forth. Is that because no one has made such an estimate? I have no doubt at all that there are stacks of estimates like that in the Pentagon and CIA. And in fact, I'm not aware of any active, uh, I haven't been made aware of any active generals, intelligence people who think that would be a good idea. Does that mean it won't happen? I don't think there was a single active general brigadier or higher, who is in favor of attacking Iraq, amazing as that may seem. And yet it got done uh, by a handful of mainly civilians and some retired generals who got eager on it, without the press in any way revealing the fact that the estimates of that war or what would come about were disastrous, that it would lead to disaster. Um, I find myself now when I'm talking to uh, college crowds who are in their, let's say, uh, 20s and down to uh, 17, all their lives we have been at war in Afghanistan. And uh, Christy Sheehan's uh, question she asked, you know, why did my son die there? For what? What were the purposes? What were the motives? What were the prospects? Never had an answer. Uh, the press had very unclean hands on that in, uh, in, in passing on lies, as a matter of fact. So um, a truth teller is a threat to these crazy and criminal, in many cases, schemes that go on inside the government, of which I was part uh, earlier, uh, having been convinced that uh, uh, there was a reason for it, but not being sufficiently questioning and challenging as to what I was being told. So I don't uh, excuse myself for that. Well, I, I think it was great that you mentioned uh, the fact that so many press outlets burn their sources or at least at the very least don't support them or respect them. Um, I think that it may be, I, I don't know if you agree with this statement, but I would say that WikiLeaks has been a, a, a singular example of an exception to that rule in their uh, support of Chelsea Manning from day one and, and uh, in their efforts to raise awareness of her plight and uh, to get support for defense funds and that type of thing but you do that your statement on that reminded me of the even the recent cases of, of whistleblowers and and uh like reality winner who have been burned by their you know the outlets that they leak to 
Uh, you know, do you have any comments on the, the latest developments with Chelsea Manning, the fact that she's now imprisoned again for her unwillingness to cooperate with the grand jury that is convened to prosecute WikiLeaks? I would have to say I don't know what the, the situation yeah. there is, it, and except that um, the fact that she was held for a couple of weeks in solitary confinement, essentially, getting allowed out of her cell from 1 to 3 a.m. In, in the morning uh, was clearly a form of torture uh, of the way that solitary confinement, which affects so many, many thousands of people at any given time in this country in particular. Uh, but she was a more well-known example of that. And it clearly was going on again. My understanding is that it was only protest and public awareness of that, that was made awareness that has gotten her out into the general population now. And um, whether, whether she feels she got adequate support from WikiLeaks, I don't know, as a matter of fact, at this point. But in any case, uh, it was not, it certainly was not their fault that she was identified. They were good on uh, concealing identity there. And um, she made a, a, a misjudgment somehow of uh, the person she spoke to that she confided in who uh, informed on her. But um, uh, there, there's other cases where, as I say, on the one point, of concealing the identity, the press is, has been quite good on that. Uh, but the, um, uh, in other respects, in other respects, not. Absolutely. Do you have any, for, for the viewers and listeners who um, are want to help Assange, but who feel, and WikiLeaks and Chelsea Manning, but who feel powerless to do so um, in the corrupt, you know, world in which we live, which you've been discussing so eloquently, what would you say they should do? What should be some of the methods that they use to raise their voices uh, for Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, and Chelsea Manning and the rest? Well, there is there is a, a defense fund for Chelsea Manning, which I don't have my fingertips here. I'm sure it could be found easily on uh, on Google uh, for, her, for her lawyer. And the same for Assange, obviously, and WikiLeaks. So the money for this defense is obviously well worthwhile. I do think, though, that this publicity about the situation is, is absolutely critical. That if they, uh, uh, if the Justice Department here and the uh, Ecuadorians, Ecuadorians and the UK can do all this in secret and prevent, present the world with a fait accompli, uh, they, will, they will do so. But the more they feel that the eye is on them, uh, of, uh, then it does not paralyze them, but it does in fact slow them up and ties their hands to some extent. So thank you for what you're doing and uh, give our best wishes to, my best wishes to Julian, if you will. If well, you absolutely. Any? Yeah, I, I was just gonna ask as well, uh, do, if you have any comment on, and as I, as I was explaining a little bit before we were live on air, the fact that uh, even if Moreno, let's say, loses power or is ousted from uh, the leadership of the Ecuadorian government, you know, there, our guest earlier was raising the possibility that that an even worse, you know, father to the right figure could replace Moreno. Uh, I didn't know if you had any comments to share uh, with the audience on that news or or any other topics that we haven't covered yet that you'd like to address. Well, as I said earlier, you've given me bad news. Uh, that's yeah, unfortunately. These days, <laughs> these days, it's almost hard to distinguish one piece of bad news from another. No, that is bad news. I take it you're saying that the, the successor would be drawn from the as assembly, would, or that there's somebody I, right in line that would, would actually be worse? I believe, I believe if I remember uh, what Jose said correctly, it would be the, either the vice president or it would be a member of a father right wing party that is sort of in coalition with Moreno at the moment. But uh, Susie Dawson is, is also telling me on a separate topic that, uh, that she wanted me to alert you to the fact that uh, Edward Snowden has also tweeted a number of times today uh, positively about Julian Assange. And uh, Susie wanted me to ask if you have any, just comment on that in particular. No, I'm, I'm not surprised to hear that. And uh, uh, he has an enormous following, I know. And so that, uh, that, should be very, that should be very helpful. But uh, Ed's, uh, Ed Snowden's views on 
First Amendment and free speech, I think, are extremely eloquent, uh, knowledgeable. Uh, and they don't relate just to his own situation by any means, but, but actually he's a very good spokesperson on that subject. So I'm glad that he's weighed in on this. And I think it can make a difference. Uh, I noticed, for example, that when my book came out in uh, England, I have a British edition of the Doomsday Machine, the publishers, I don't have any control over the cover. And I noticed that the various blurbs or endorsements I'd gotten, they chose to put Ed Snowden's uh, singly on the cover, indicating that uh, the following that he does have in so many parts of the world and justly so, rightly so. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I, I re we all genuinely really appreciate it. And, you know, when you say, you know, thank, thank us for, for doing the vigil, I mean, obviously the, the tech crew and everyone else that is behind the scenes, I think deserves more credit than anyone because they work tirelessly for hours upon hours and their, their names and faces are nowhere to be seen. So thank you for those sentiments. We appreciate I'll it. Say, if there are any further developments, I'll be watching on Google News here, which very regularly if what's the latest on this and i'd be very happy to weigh in uh, the next in the next days if there are any further developments absolutely I, well we would be absolutely you know ecstatic to have you back with us whether it's this weekend or in future we really appreciate you taking the time with us to join us and the 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 more people i think who protest the in, incarceration of chelsea manning for her resistance to the secret grand jury in this case uh, is also very helpful. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much.